We are just about ready to begin fabricating the new body for our $500 vintage supercar project. Last week, we dug into the clay design. This week, we're going to continue that and then afterwards taking the steps that we need to begin building the body for this car. All that and more in this week's episode of Project Jigsaw. So Ryan did a really good job on the back end. I'm feeling really good about the where we got on the front end, but we haven't met here in the middle. So we need to finish fleshing this part out. Fortunately, it just needs fewer details than the front or back. So we should be able to get through this pretty quick. sure about putting a lip on here. I hate that so much. I think it would look better if we had a lower lip too. Game over man, it's game over. We got a design that we like. However, um, like every, the tape didn't even stick. Like every clay model, one side is the side we want, the other side is not. In fact, the driver's side of the car is not even remotely close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a tape line down the center to uh, differentiate so that we can uh, help visualize a little bit for ourselves. So I don't know if you guys remember a couple videos ago, we brought up how we do all this work early in the morning before we do regular shop work. Well, on top of all that, we also have really cool opportunities going on. When you're watching this video, I will be on a plane to Idaho to collaborate with Grindhard Plumbing Co. again. That's a video coming out in the future. So while I'm out there, I'm gonna be filming as well. So if there's anything you guys wanna see that Grindhard has done or you know, see us do with Grindhard, let us know in the comments. And by us, you mean you. Yeah. yeah, and by us, I mean me, because Tony's staying back to uh, be responsible and get more shop work done. We have two full-time jobs, <laughs> both of us at the same time. Also to add, I just wanna say, it's pretty rad because before we even started doing YouTube, I used to watch like Grindhard Plumbing Co. on my lunch break here. And now I'm being flown out to do work for them. That's pretty that's cool. That's like the dream. That's pretty much the dream right there, yeah. And that's thanks to you guys for continually supporting the channel and helping us get out there. So thanks guys. got the clay model where we want it for the time being. We did some refining work in here, which probably is a lot more subtle and hard to pick up on camera. Got a little radius on top of the roof, which made a huge difference there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, really big difference. Yeah, added our lips, put a placeholder here for our vent. Um, we still know we're, we're gonna carve something out here for an air outlet. And obviously we need an air inlet for the cooling system. The rest of the design work we're going to move into some CAD work. We'll continue to refine this clay model as we work on the car. And some of the final design decisions will be made on the actual body itself. So what's next? Now that we have our clay model figured out, I'm gonna 3D scan the car so we can take that data to make templates so we can begin actually fabricating the body finally. So this right here is what's called the point cloud. Right, if I zoom out, right, it looks like the car. 
But if I, and it's, you know, it's kind of fuzzy or whatever. If I zoom in, you'll notice it's made up by a bunch of tiny little points. It's like if you like, if you're watching TV from across the room, it looks really crisp. If you put your face up against it, you can see all the little pixels. It looks like the Sandman from Spider-Man. Yeah, it's all exactly. all little pieces of sand. So what the computer's gonna do now is I have these settings set up to hopefully when I hit process, it'll turn this into a mesh, which is where it'll take all those points and turn all these little vertices that will make up the 3D model that we need to then use for reference to remodel and resurface and also use for our templates. This technology is still rad to me because when I was a kid, if I had a 3D printer and I had a 3D scanner and I could model what I wanted and I'd make all my own toys, it'd be pretty sweet. But like the concept of being able to do this with I mean, this scanner is like $600. A $600 scanner, I can 3D print tools, I can 3D print the models to scan on or to put clay on. I can do all that for less than a grand. That's crazy to me. This is all very exciting for me and I can't get it across on camera as excited as I actually am for what this whole workflow is. It's come a long way from making cardboard templates and hoping for the best. <laughs>the model is cut in half to the correct side it's leveled and all that junk that needs to happen it takes forever that I'm not great at but we're good now um, what I need to do next is I'm gonna make templates that cut across here I'm thinking about maybe three for the front three for the back um, and they're only gonna be half sections of the car the current working theory is I can make templates that are within the four foot by four foot area of our CNC plasma cutter and then cut them out of 22 gauge steel, or 20 gauge steel actually. It'll make more sense once I get them cut out and they kind of explain what the full workflow is going to be. Part of the reason I haven't fully explained it yet is because we're still working the entire thing out and most of it's just theory right now. So just stay tuned. So here's a little pro tip. If you're working with a mesh and you want to take like profile cuts to make 2D templates or whatnot. Um, what you do is you select your mesh. I'm gonna go over here to create and hit create mesh section sketch. And then I'm gonna choose my selection, my section plane after selecting the body and make the plane be, you know, uh, perpendicular to the car here. And then I can drag it along here and choose what section I want. My plan here is to start my first loop through the center of the wheel so it's easy to locate on the car. And then I'll measure a certain distance between each one for front and rear and that should work pretty well. Lots of theories here, we'll, we'll find out. so to make the body for jigsaw we have a plan we're going to be using a certain style called super licht or super light i can't pronounce it in german correctly which was pioneered by chris rungi chris rungi actually taught me a little bit of this process when i did a class with him years ago it's a spin-off of the super Ligera style which is where you take steel tubing bend it to the shape of the car and then wrap that steel tubing with steel skin this version involves aluminum tubing and aluminum skin instead hence the light portion of super light to begin this process there's one major tool i need to bend this aluminum tubing and i'm going to make my own tool because that's what we do here so to make this tool, I'm going to be modeling and 3D printing it because I think it should work well with bending aluminum because aluminum is a lot softer than steel, obviously. So let's jump on the computer and see what we can do.
Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Ryan, how could a 3D printed plastic tool bend metal? And you're not wrong because, well, the forces on this material, eh, it can be a little janky for a 3D printer. It's not like it's a tool meant for pressing metal, instead you're actually bending with it. I'm not an engineer, but like the shear load for plastic on this 3D printed isn't typically great. However, your strength in a 3D print doesn't come from the infill, but actually comes from the perimeters or walls or like the shells of the print. I have five walls of 0.4 millimeter thick plastic here. That should be plenty of strength to do this. And if not, well, I mean, we're out maybe, uh, what, this is gonna be just barely under a spool of filament. So we're out like $17 of material, which is whatever. So I'm printing with what's called PLA Meta by Sunlu. It's very similar to PLA Plus, and it's way better than regular PLA. It prints fast, it prints like butter. It's super cheap, on sale it's like $17 on Amazon often for a full kilogram spool. I love this stuff. And no, unfortunately we're not sponsored by Sunlu, so I'm not getting paid for that statement. The Benger 9000 is done. However, as you can see, there's a few print issues with this. Having an issue with this printer where the Z axis sometimes doesn't really go up. Like, it'll run the same layer height twice in a row, and then, you know, it'll over extrude and kind of schmoo out. But you can actually see in the shape of the curve there that it's like it's smushing the, uh, the, the model down on itself because it steps over. So. I gotta look into that. I keep having this issue of head since I first got this printer. I'm thinking that maybe my roller wheels need adjusted. Yeah, this one feels a little loose here. But more importantly, this is finally done, so we can test it once our aluminum tubing is here. Today's Tony's birthday, so I got him a Bozo the Clown like he always wanted. What are these five other ones for? Don't, 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 don't worry about those. Those are for later. <laughs> so the process we're gonna to use to make this body, we wanted to get some half inch 6005 T5 aluminum tubing, and we couldn't find any. So we got some 6061 T6 aluminum. Rather than buy a whole bunch of it and find out we can't bend it, we bought one too. Wow, Tony, that's a large load on your uh, Cayenne. I here. know, I'm not sure if the roof. Is they held on the zip ties? Yes, very tightly. I Look, I took off one zip tie and you still can't move it. <laughs> Can I whack your glasses? Very with stout. This? What are you whacking with it? How much was that money wise for this oh, one tube? Was, yeah, it was like 50 some dollars. What? <laughs> but, yeah. but if we bought, you know, $300 of this tubing. For right. what we need and, and then, then found out that it was just work. gonna sit on the rack and take up space and not get used for anything, that would be worse. Why are you describing me? Yeah. So this is 6061 T6 aluminum. T6 is the tempering, if you're not aware of any kind of metallurgy, which I know very little about. Basically, this is not bendable. If I tried to bend this, it would crack or split or kink. It just wouldn't be great. We were only able to get 6061 T6 locally. We're gonna have to make lemonade with like rocks, basically, right now. Stone soup. Stone soup. To make this tubing bendable, I'm gonna have to do what's called annealing. At the very beginning of this okay. YouTube channel. Is this a running? No, I'm kneeling, yes. Oh, thanks, Tony. <laughs> In the very beginning of this YouTube channel, I put a video out before we started doing all of our projects about annealing. And you can go back and watch it if you want. Uh, the quality of it's not great, and maybe I shouldn't even tell you to do that because of how bad it is. However, the information is good. When you anneal aluminum, you do a heat treatment that causes it to be back to a temper zero or T zero, which makes it very malleable. 6061 can be a little tough to anneal, but I think we'll be able to do it. But this is gonna be a test to prove whether or not we can make this material work. Because if it does work, I can buy a big stack of this, we can anneal it all, which takes a little bit of time, but we will get the material that we need to build this car. So when you're annealing, there's two different ways you can do this that I know of. The first way is you take your acetylene torch, 
you make a really sooty flame, you dance the soot across the uh, aluminum so you get it, it looks like blackened. Then you kick the oxygen on, heat it up, and then you dance around until that soot goes away. I don't like using that process. Every time I tried using that process, there's been like a 50% chance of me burning the aluminum. I like to use a Sharpie, and you make sharp, you make squiggle lines. So I'm just gonna take the Sharpie here. The Sharpie's nice too because it's a little bit worn, so I don't need super bold lines. And I'm just gonna kind of scribble on this tube. This is gonna be like the gauge to let me know when this aluminum has gotten warm enough to be annealed. If you overheat it, you're gonna burn it, it's gonna crystallize and you just ruin the material. If you underdo it, it's not gonna anneal and you're just gonna be back to square one. Also, the most important thing, which is something I've stressed many times in this channel with metal shaping and welding steel especially, you want to let this cool ambiently with the air temperature and not force cool. If you force cool it, you're gonna retemper it. You don't, we don't want to do that. <laughs> Without any further ado, I'm going to stop talking and we're going to try and uh, just kneel a small section of this to see if it's bendable afterwards. The proof. I cannot bend this. It springs right back. Try harder. I don't I don't want to break it. Should I break part of it? <laughs> no, to prove? Don't, no, don't Can break it. Can we prove it? <laughs> okay. It, it holds no memory. Kind of like me. So the idea is to screw this to the table vertically like this, so I can put tubing in and bend it. However, I don't know if vertical is the best way, which is why we have a board that we can move it around here, because I might end up screwing it flat in the table and do it horizontally, because there's more room that way. Um, so we're gonna kind of workshop this as we go. <laughs> yeah, we're using long pieces of tubing, so. Yeah, exactly. All right, so moment of truth, we have our annealed aluminum. This length here is about annealed. Um, we just kind of screwed this to a table we had sitting around this to kind of for a test here. So now I can stick it through and we should be able to just bend it. Look at that, yeah, I'm gonna hold the table there, Tony. There it is, proof of a concept. I had the 3D printed tool bending metal, which is sick. So we have our proof of concept now. This tubing does bend and it doesn't, crack. I have zero kinks in this bend. I'm actually very surprised. <laughs> it's what I like knew in theory would work with what I know from annealing. Uh, I will say, however, when you bring something down to a, a zero temper uh, by annealing it, it will work hardened again. That's something to keep in mind if you're doing something at home that's similar. All that being said, we have a single length of this, which gets us nowhere. We need a lot more tubing. So we're going to order more tubing for the next video. I got my three front nose templates made. We're just gonna start at the front now because I don't want to do all the work and do the front and rear and then realize I have an issue and waste all the material and time. Since the front templates are done, I labeled them. I also added little holes here. Um, we'll explain those in the future here when we start uh, assembling the nose, but I think we're pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and export these and slap them on a flash drive and we'll uh, cut them out in the plasma and see how it goes. All right, so we got our 20 gauge cut down to four foot by four foot sections. Let's see how they come out.
labeled and everything. I know, I think it's gonna work out nicely. Yeah, there's a profile gauge. Only uh, two more to go here, quick. Yeah. And totally not any waste left over. <laughs> we'll use that in a future project. <laughs> yeah, we'll use that for something. I guess I cut a little bit close to the edge of the table because this blew all the fluid onto the floor. Oh well. Tony, yes. how are you over there when you're also over here? You just stole my dad joke. <laughs> Bozo. Here we go, we got our template cut. So this is the nose template, the end, that's why it's NSC, I left the O out because if I would cut an O out of the uh, plasma table, it would just fall out, so you know. Um, so the plan here is to take these three templates, space them out just like I did on the computer. Now. Keep in mind, right now, these are just kind of set up and not even measured or anything. Tony just- <laughs> Ran into a car. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They're not even measured or anything. But this is like loosely the shape that's gonna be going around the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these templates to cover half the car. We're gonna lay them out on a table. We're gonna trace them. We're gonna lay tubing on it. We're gonna bend that tubing to match. We're gonna jig up these pieces so we can make a framework to then make our front clamshell. If you're not familiar with the clamshell is, then basically means that the front of this whole car is going to be on hinges so that the bodywork can kind of lift up off the car. I mean, we're gonna be skinning this with aluminum, the car's steel, we're not welding these panels directly to the car, we're gonna make everything serviceable. So the front and rear will have clamshells. Earlier in the video, I mentioned these holes that I added to the edge of the profile. Those are for zip ties, so that we can zip tie our tubing to this template, and then we'll be able to slide into the framing we're gonna build for as like a jig, for the clamshell to build the clamshell off the car. Um, this is all working theories, which like most of the things we're doing right now, because this is a brand new process we're trying that I think will fit this build pretty well. Our aluminum tubing is on its way so we can start the framework on our front clamshell, as well, while we're getting aluminum parts, our... Uh... Why do you keep saying aluminum like that? Because <laughs> it, it, it's, the, it's the British way to say it. Yeah. Aluminium. Aluminium. Our aluminium rear trailing arms are also on their way so we can move forward on our rear suspension. Oh man, it's gonna be an action-packed video next week. Yeah, Which forward on our rear suspension. Totally will not be filmed in slightly advanced because I won't be here otherwise. This video has been paid for and sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform designed for entrepreneurs to stand out online. Whether you're brand new at this or picking up the reins at a different project, Squarespace makes it easy to stand out and succeed. And you can do all that in one place under your own terms. So head to squarespace.com slash cruciblecoachworks to save 10% off your first order of a website or domain. Or as always, you can use the link in the description down below. Big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and we'll see you guys next week. I would've laughed so hard if you punched the rail behind him. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at that. <laughs> <laughs>